Yeah, the rain's coming down pretty good. It was blowing 30, 35 for a while. Now it's down to 17, 12 now. Goes back and forth all the time. But they say it's 14 foot outside. So we'll wait for another day and a half, maybe two days. We'll see. Kind of yucky out there right now. Tim and this is Tim B at Sea and we're in the Gulf of Mexico and uh, it's not really dangerous but it's not really fun either <sighs> let me show you what I'm talking about all right for those that aren't familiar this is Florida this is the Gulf of Mexico over here and this is the eastern seaboard out on the Atlantic Here's Tampa. We had been held up in Tampa for almost five days waiting for a big system that was developing over here. Kind of uh, put a stop to everything for ages. Uh, when we finally waited until the weather just started to break a little bit to try to get back on schedule. And uh, on the way out, the pilot said, oh, you did a good job. The, I, I, there was a pilot bringing a ship in and I was making passing arrangements with him. And he called me up and he said, yeah, you made a good call, stayed at anchor as long as you did. He said, we saw 18 feet at the buoy. <laughs> that's, uh, that's like, uh, what, six meters? Something like that. Anyway, uh, so we're going to Pas um, Mississippi. Over here. And, uh... We're doing, we're doing this, we're, uh, we left yesterday at about 6 o'clock at night, and it's now almost 8 o'clock in the morning. We've got 356 miles to go, and we're doing terrible speed of only like averaging about 6.3 knots. We should be doing like 7.5 to 8 right now if it was calm. But the problem is this. We've got a lot of wind that we're battling, but we're also doing these steep, short seas that are really kind of the hallmark or trademark of uh, the Gulf of Mexico. Let me just tell you, show you our conditions here. See the wind's coming at about a 30 degree angle that way. And uh, blowing at 29, 28 knots right there. But this is a real problem. You see this right here? We're at 32 feet underneath the boat. So uh, what that means for me is that normally when it's rough out I can dump a lot of wire and put the hammer down and really kind of get going but in these shallow waters I can't really do that because I run the risk of having the wire that I usually use the canton area of the wire the, the, the arc of the wire I use that as a shock absorber well I don't have a lot of water for that to fall in place without contacting the bottom so that's kind of a real problem that's something that I have to work with 
so we're doing this and you say well why don't we go straight across and uh, we can do that but that's uh that that brings in some challenges as well this is a, a chart that many of you might not have seen see all these red squares we call this a block chart well, what these are actually uh -oh. Right, going like this you can see these blocks and each block has a number these are what they call uh, leasing blocks so the entire Gulf of Mexico have all these blocks in that you know not the entire Gulf of Mexico but the entire part that's oil rich that is part of the US you know uh, the economic exclusion zone um, so oil companies will lease each one of those blocks so yeah, we could go out in deeper water, but we probably experience uh, not so much of the chop that we're experiencing here, but, but definitely uh, more wind and more waves and that sort of stuff. So we're staying on this route that uh, is a relatively well-defined route. And uh, quite frankly, often it's, it's, it's not so bad. <laughs> like I say, after having a week of a really bad storm in here things are pretty messed up now I don't know how much the camera is gonna pick this up but look at the waves here if you see this let me try to do this so I can make sure if you see we've got a whole bunch of things we've got seas that are coming in this way and then you'll see seas coming this way and then a swell coming this way with the wind coming that way if you look None of these seas are what I would call out of parameter, like too big for us or anything like that. This one right here, if you remember, the bow of the the bow of these 4200s is about eight eight feet off the water, um, and uh, you know when it's flat at the dock, and uh, so these seas are probably around six feet with an occasional eight every once in a while. But the thing that really makes them special is not only are they coming from different... See, see that one we just went sideways on us. You keep trying to... I don't know, like I say, I hope the camera is picking this up. But it seems like every sea, every wave has a mind of its own. And uh, because they're, they're very short, we call that the period. The period is extremely tight, really small on these. So it gives us the effect of us trying to almost drive uphill now see here's a good good C right there that one probably was a good eight feet and it didn't really do much to us because it had it because the period to the next one was timed right and it was okay it's when you get those short choppy ones that really kind of eat things up like that you see that that looked much more violent when in fact it was a, probably half the size of the other wave but anyway the uh, period or the time between the the, the seas um, that really that that really really makes for uh, whether things are uh, less awesome. <laughs> That's a award Carol line. Uh, one of the YouTubers I watch is uh, Ward Carol. He he's a uh, he used to be a F fourteen Rio. Radio Intercept officer, and uh, he has a great channel if you're into that sort of thing. But uh, he says less awesome instead of saying things suck. <laughs> I think that's great. Anyway, we're here. If everything, um, yeah, I, I had when I before I had left, I had sent an email out to all the parties involved, saying that I hope to get in on uh, Thursday morning. And right now we're looking at Thursday afternoon late. But uh, that may change as we get further up. Let me show you this again. When we get up here and we make this turn, hopefully, hopefully the conditions will be more behind us. And the even if the period of the wave doesn't change, how how um, how we're affected by it does. In other words, if we're if you're standing still and there's a five second period, in other words, a, a pillar that would be in the middle of the ocean would be hit by a wave every five seconds. Well, if we're going ahead at six knots, 
we might be hitting that every two seconds. But that same wave, if we are going away from it, that five seconds might turn into seven or eight seconds. That's going to dramatically change things aboard. And uh, so this is us. We just kind of hold on. Everything's all a wreck. All night long you're hearing crashes down here and crashes down there and that's just kind of the way things go and so we just kind of hang on and clean up in the morning and uh, that's how it works but uh, the Gulf of Mexico is no joke uh, I remember years ago I was on a run work bringing fuel for the Navy uh, up to, uh, or we'd pick it up in, uh, uh, I don't know, way, way up the Mississippi River, and we'd bring it over here to Tampa. And uh, we probably did that trip eight or ten times, and the water was like glass. It was beautiful. Right now you're seeing this blue churned up water, but when you get offshore, the Gulf of Mexico has this, uh, what I call, finger paint blue. I don't know if uh, I don't know if kids even have finger paints anymore. But I remember when I was a kid we used to have the these finger paints and the blue was just this amazing really dark vibrant blue. Whenever I see the water in the offshore in the Gulf of Mexico, who, who knows, maybe we'll show you something like that. maybe we'll see something later, depending on where they send us next. But uh yeah. I think we did a whole bunch of trips and it was just beautiful. And then we did a couple that were not beautiful. And like I say, even though this one isn't so bad, today isn't the worst, um, it still isn't very fun. Uh, preparing food, you know, uh, usually every morning my alarm goes off at five and I jump in the shower and try to relieve Luke by 5.30. And uh, yeah, that getting in the shower in a wet surface uh, just is asking for uh, trouble as far as uh, slipping and falling and breaking your arm or something like that. So uh, making dinner, um, we usually have certain meals that we can make that are easier, less preparing and less uh, cleaning up afterwards. And, you know, what we call the one pot Johnny, <laughs> you try to make everything in one pot. But uh, yeah, it's all, and, and then they're sleeping, you know. Uh, there are times that you get thrown and rolled around in your bunk, and then there are other times that you actually, you know, you'll experience being levitated in your bunk, and then you come down into your mattress and you weigh twice, twice as much as you normally do. And uh, this is all part of the job. And luckily for us, as you can see, we're, we're about halfway through before where I think it's gonna get a lot better. Just giving you a glimpse of how messed up. I really hope you guys can see this. But it's I'm just seeing white caps that are going this way, swell that's coming this way, a wave that will come over this way. All kinds of different things. Bizarre out here. Anyway, that's it. Nice. Come around that way and here on in we should be good. 
case, that's the hope at any rate. Oops, if we bring that back. And that's where we are. So life is good. I often say how it's a small industry, and when we picked up our pilot, turns out he uh, was a classmate of one of my old uh, mates, who's a pilot in New York right now, so that was kind of fun. But here we are coming in the uh, over the bar in Pascagoula. Pascagoula's got a lot of these oil rigs that they're either working on or storing or whatever. Interesting place. Pascagoula seems to be loaded up with all kinds of wildlife despite all the oil infrastructure. It's kind of fun being there, but we had our Christmas there and we did our safety meetings and all that sort of stuff. But thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. You guys stay safe and I'll see you on the one. And please don't forget to check out SV Paquita and shout out to all my patrons. You can uh, support the channel by uh, checking the description or going to patreon.com. Uh, see you there.